Where does adultery nestle? Where does the corruption of young girls hide? Who has two or three licentious beds in addition to his own matrimony one, on which he squanders his money and wastes the strength of a healthy body given to him by God that he may work for his family, and not to wear himself out through filthy unions which place him below unclean beasts? You heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, that he who looks at a woman lustfully, that she who wished to go with a man has already committed adultery in his or her heart, simply by that. There is no reason which can justify fornication, none, neither the abandonment nor the repudiation of a husband, nor pity for the repudiated wife. You have one soul only. When it is joined to another soul by a path, pact of faithfulness, it must not lie. Otherwise, the beautiful body for which you sin will go with you, O impure souls, into the inexhausted fire. Mutilate your body rather than kill it for forever by damning it. Come to your moral senses, O rich men, verminous sinks of vice, so that you may not disgust heaven. Mary, who at the beginning listened with a face which was a dream of allurement and irony, sneering now and again at the end of the sermon, becomes livid with rage. She realizes that although Jesus does not look at her, he is speaking to her. She becomes more and more livid and rebellious, and at last can resist no longer. She spitefully envelops herself in her veil, and followed by the glances of the crowds, jeering at her, and by Jesus' voice which pursues her, she runs down the slope of the mountain, leaving strips of her dress on the thistles and dog rose bushes growing on the edges of the path, laughing out of anger and mockery. I see nothing else, but Jesus says, you will see more.